Suzuki's GSX-S1000 is an absolute beast of a bike. But the trouble with riding around on monsters like that is you spend far too much time doing this and not nearly enough time doing that. But there are other bikes, smaller bikes, but absolutely big to be thrashed. Manhandled. Dominated, if you will. These filthy little bikes love nothing better than being thrown over your knee and spanked like the dirty little scooters they are. This is the new GSX S750. It replaces the capable but slightly anonymous GSR750. It's got 114 horsepower instead of 106, and it gets bigger four piston brakes and nice petally discs. It's smarter, faster, and sexier. It's got the same ABS traction control systems and digital dash as the Jix S1000. It's also got an equally revealing outfit on, including a skimpy belly pan that can only be described as wanton. But it's not all good news. This brazen hussy gives us plenty of reasons to dish out the punishment. Don't you? That's for being four kilos heavier and 36 horsepower down on the thousand. That's for having skinnier forks and a 1.5 litre smaller tank than the old GSR 750. And that's for having a 10 mil higher seat than the thousand. What? You think shorter riders don't want to ride on a mid size naked? Who's your rider? Come on, say it! Who's your rider? You know, I'm actually gonna drop this metaphor at this point because I'm kind of getting pretty uncomfortable and I know that there's some of you out there who are probably enjoying it way too much. Okay, maybe I got a, a little bit carried away there, but there is a point to all this. Some bikes, the minute you get on board, they demand respect. Others are all about that instant confidence. Well, this one goes a step further and just immediately starts shamelessly begging you to ride it harder. So, don't worry about the numbers. This bike feels smaller, more compact, and more approachable than the Thousand. The riding position's a bit more upright, thanks to a narrower, more swept back handlebar that makes a broad-shouldered galoot like me feel like I'm eating dinner on a plane. Get it out on the road and you're looking at a flat-out enabler. Seat height aside, this thing has to be one of the easiest things to have fun on at any speed. You know, there's exactly two corners on my uh, way to work. You want to see them? One. <laughs> and here is two. Okay, fun's over. We just sit and go in straight lines for another 15 minutes. Around town, it's a hell of a commuter. Slow speed handling is so damn good, it makes me want to break out a bunch of witches' hats and go do gymkhana on it. In fact, I find myself looking for excuses to switch lanes while I'm lane splitting just because it's so nimble in tight spaces. And that idle assist system that's popping up on all sorts of Suzuki's these days, that makes it just about impossible to stall. The engine character gives it an extraordinary case of Jekyll and Hyde syndrome. In the first third of the taco, this bike helps old ladies across the road and bakes biscuits for the neighbours. And then you hit a magical line around 6,000 RPM and it sprouts horns and starts swatting ice cream cones out of the trembling hands of toddlers. It just couldn't feel more different. At low revs, you can give it a handful any time you like and you'll just get smooth, clean, measured, unintimidating acceleration. So you do. You give it a fistful. And then you hit the mid-range and suddenly, you're a pebble and this thing's a slingshot. It can get genuinely, seriously fast. Much faster than 114 horsepower sounds. to explore the upper reaches of this crazy inline four engine. This is where I'd expect the bike to get let down by 
its budget level running gear because this is a cheap bike particularly for what it offers but to Suzuki's great credit I think they've absolutely nailed it here these Nissan four piston brakes these are genuine two finger stoppers and they're up for anything that this crazy 750cc engine can dish out and the suspension by KYB Sorry, just a filthy bit of road here. The suspension by KYB is only adjustable for preload at front and rear. And normally I'd expect that to mean it was super duper under damped and really bouncy. Not the case at all. In fact, I think this is some of the best budget non-adjustable suspension I've ever ridden on. This bike handles great and it turns like a demon. Some of that's got to come down to the Bridgestone tyres, which Look, I've always been a fan of the way Bridgestone Sports tyres steer in particular, and these Hypersport S21s do an absolutely great job. Plenty of grip, but it's the way that they're so deliciously neutral in the corner. That's what I like about them. You think about changing your line and it's done. So, while this Mini Jix S is super friendly and capable around town, it's also an extremely easy bike to go really, really fast on in the twisties. It's confidence distilled into metal, and it's gonna win a lot of fans from people who don't like the wacky seating position or helium-filled front tire of Yamaha's MT-09. I think a lot of riders who are still in their first five odd years on the road are gonna fall in love with motorcycling on this machine. In fact, that's kind of how I'm looking at the GSX S750. I would call it the king of the my first big bikes, but it just keeps on begging to get flogged. Yeah, I like that, 